Rotational, I'm D2. With me is Kyle D, and we are in for the semifinals from here on out. We have four players eliminated already today, and remaining are Jay Shaw, Tom, Life Coach, and Kalento. Our first match right now is going to be Jay Shaw versus Tom, the season pro in Tom, having won two land championships already, versus the lesser known Jay Shaw, who is our Chinese qualifier, had to go all the way from the beginning to qualify basically twice, or actually three times for this event. And uh, going to be a very interesting match. Taiwan versus China. Lots of rival rivalries there and potential bad blood. So, uh, you excited for this match, Kaldi? You know, question about it. I mean, we have such great players here. Will, will Tom be able to knock out his fourth uh, Chinese player here of the tournament? That would be absolutely insane. Making the final as well for him. I mean, this would be, what, his fourth or fifth final now in a few months? I mean, this guy's just on fire. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, Tom just doing so well in every single tournament that he's played lately. Really uh, kind of crazy because he wasn't doing too well. I remember, I mean, I was even able to take him out uh, back in the 2014 BlizzCon Championship. So just he's been on a tear lately, as you can see. But uh, going to be seeing Jay Shaw's decks first. Going to be that Combo Druid, as well as the Secret Paladin and the Control Warrior there. So we will see if he's able to uh, take Tom out with his particular lineup. Uh, as for Tom, he does have Warrior, Warlock, Priest. So looking to be a lot of control going on in this matchup. No, at least that the Kazan Mystic and Druid is going to be useless here against Thomas. There will be no secrets from his point of view. But yeah, Jason's class is seeming really, really strong here for the semi-final. But Tom, obviously, from Taiwan, won the Onog, won the Aces, has the Reno Lock, the uh, Control Priest, it looks like, uh, and, and the uh, what looks to be a Control Warrior. So a lot of control. This match might take a while here. Yeah, I don't want to bait chat into any resident sleepers, but a lot of control going on in this matchup right now. Uh, basically, the fastest deck we have, I believe, is... Uh, I think Jason was playing Secret Paladin, right? I've already forgotten uh, since we saw that graphic. But uh, also the Combo Drizz. So those are basically our fastest decks today. No face decks, really, unless you consider, you know, mid-range... Uh, Mid-range Druid or the Secret Paladin uh, as face decks, but yeah, going to be a lot of Tom holding off Jaysha and Jaysha trying to finish the game out with those mid-range decks. Obviously, the Control Warrior in uh, Jaysha's arsenal as well. So, uh, if ever the if ever Jaysha's Control Warrior comes out, we could be in for a long game. That is true, but I guess if we look at Jaysha's decks, though, Secret Paladin will generally be strong against uh, these types of decks. The Druid as well especially strong against the war that we see here up in the first match, but this has been turning around a little bit now. The double brawl is strong against mm -hmm. the druid. The Danasis is weak against the warrior, and the Bass is very, very strong against the druid. So, historically, it's been very, very weak to uh, play uh, the control warrior against the druid, and it's been heavily favored for the druid, but now it seems even, even slightly better for the warrior than the druid. But I wouldn't go that far, but uh, yeah, you're definitely right. This used to seem like it was unwinnable for the Druid or for the control warrior in the situation, just impossible to deal with. And Druid just felt like it was, you know, 70 30 or so. But now, what would you say it is? Maybe 55 45 for the Druid? It's close, yeah. It's definitely between 60 and 40, uh, some, some one way or the other. It's very important, though. Yeah, I guess the brawls are critical. The uh, the, uh, I guess the engines of lore is very important, but I mean, the druid just does run out of steam in the end, and it's going to spell a lot of trouble here. Uh, as I mean, it, it comes down to the fiery war axe, what you keep in your opening hand. Now, Tom's hand seems kind of weak, whereas I, I don't like uh, Jace's mulligan here. You definitely don't want to be keeping a 5-drop and a 4-drop, because you have so many of them, you're bound to be drawing something on turn 4. Right. What you're not bound to be ha ha having happen is something on turn 2 or 3, but I mean, Jay said just figures, okay, I'm not going to be aggressive in the early game, I'm going to take this to the late game, I'm going to sit back, and I'm not going to run out of cards. Yeah, definitely. I think what he's realizing is that I just need as many gr good minions to use as possible. Sometimes you get the double combo in your hand, uh, or not double combo, but you get things, you know, like second wild growth, or you get, you know, pieces of the combo in your hand, maybe even swipe that's 
not very useful in this matchup as well. So just wants as many minions as possible and uh, had the had the uh, ramp there as well. Looks like he's gonna go for uh, the Innervate Shredder into Coin Shredder and uh, just see if he can make things happen after that. And uh, like you were saying, this is a very good card in this matchup to be able to take out that sh uh, Shredder right away and not have to rely potentially on weapons. Jayshaw here, probably looking to go into that Coin Shredder after uh, having done so earlier, but uh, doesn't have a follow-up if he goes for that play, and obviously the only other 4-drop in his deck is probably going to be that Keeper that grows, so if he goes for this, he's basically consigning himself to having uh, a Hero Power play the next turn, unless he can pick up an Innervate or maybe even a Wrath to just smooth things over. That is true here, but I mean, yeah, the follow-up isn't there, but the Fiery War is exactly wow. what... what uh, what Tom needed couldn't. I don't think this is a better card for him. It's stronger than that spite right. even here because now we can clear both of them. I think you definitely want to see what it is though. It's it would be better to <clears throat> not wait if you're facing the uh, annoyed Tom. But other than that, I mean, and not pick that might be interesting. Yeah, that's pretty good for Jay Shaw here. Particularly if he can draw a card right now. Let's see if he can draw one. Does not get it. Yeah, does not get never it. Never lucky. Is, yeah, yeah, never Oof. lucky. Does pick up the Wrath, which will potentially allow him to either clear the board or draw him a card and cycle a bit. I, I think I like clearing the board here just to keep up the tempo and uh, keep your Nat Pagel on the table. What do you think? It's a tough call. I mean, he will need to use a, a charge of the, uh, of the weapon if he's going to clear here. I feel like Wrath 1 is fine. Yeah, but uh, looks like Jayshaw is going to clear the board. He does have a way to draw cards in that Azure Drake the following turn. He has perfectly 5, 6, 7, so I don't... At, at the moment, he's not really hurting for cards too much, so I can see this uh, working out for him. Looks like Tom doesn't want to go for the revenge, a bit too... Um, you're, you're sacrificing too much, and Nat Pagel doesn't draw again. I'm pretty happy that this card is not in the meta anymore, Kaldi. <laughs> Yeah, no question about it. I mean, do you remember how overpowered it used to be? It was just a nightmare. Yeah, Not that and Tinkmaster, or yeah, Tinkmaster Overspark Oof. was just absolutely obnoxious. But uh, yeah, those days are behind us, thankfully here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, interesting. Can so the Tom... events be? Yeah, can the events be what, what we need to see here? I mean, I don't like the execute. Yeah, Tom plays it perfectly. I feel like the wrench is definitely stronger than the. Uh, I guess going for the second belt you here, but there is the Sylvanas follow-up, and I don't know what Tom can do about that. Yeah, the, this Sylvanas will cause problems for Tom, absolutely. Uh, he might decide to even just give up the, the slime in the situation. Uh, but yeah, we will see what he goes for, speaking of Tom. The, I mean, yeah, the last play, he could have gone for the Belcher, like you say, but it could have been swiped. It's probably what uh, he was worried about. Uh, strangely enough, you know, Druid doesn't seem like a class that, you know, thrives with spells, but a lot of times, if you leave up, leave up that Drake, it can really do a lot of work with the rests and swipes that it has at his disposal. Tom does pick up the Sylvanas here, but uh, if he goes for that, Jayshaw has a guaranteed steal on it, because he could throw a Sylvanas in, use the Savage Roar, and, he, and uh, Wrath his own Sylvanas. Uh, but would that be the worst for Tom? Because maybe he could clear it next turn if he has a way to activate Execute. I mean, it would be pretty bad, yeah. Like, you could even big game Hunter's own Sylvanas if that came to it with the uh, Savage Rope. But I feel like I feel like you may have to just throw the Execute and, and be contempt here with using the uh, the uh, either the belt or the Sylvanas yourself. I feel like leaving the Sylvanas alive for JSH is just too risky for Tom. Right, so he's going to consider it. Looks like he's just going to give up this slime. It's uh, pretty harmless in the long run. And then plays his Sylvanas out to get the most power on the board possible. This does force Jayshaw to deal with this before he makes any sort of his own play, which um, will, you know, grant Tom some time, right? If Jayshaw, Jayshaw having to deal with this is a big deal because now he has to use four mana, uh, either in the form of a swipe or a Wrath plus hero power, and I imagine that's what he's going to do. So yeah, has to use that four mana, which means he only has a, a three mana play afterward. The best thing being that shade. And from there, Tom can go into a Sludge Belcher and get a Ysera behind it. So I think Tom looking at the long run and realizing that uh, playing the Sylvanas now will provide him some tempo. I think things are looking okay, but think about it. If Tom hadn't talked to the uh, Ysera, if that had been an Armorsmith, Tom would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, right. But, okay, we see the Belcher. 
probably going down it to Grommet on top of the Tom getting everything he needs. But for the follow up with the uh, with the Doctor Boom into potentially Savage or Lothar, but I feel like I like Jason's position here better than Tom's. Yeah, j -Shot has more options, but Tom has definitely those huge minions that can be difficult for j -Shot to deal with. It'll be interesting to see how, you know, brave Tom can be uh, after j -Shot potentially plays this Dr. Boom. Maybe he just throws down his Ysera, uh, realizing that there's nothing else to do. I believe if j -Shot plays this Dr. Boom right now and has combo in hand, he likely has lethal even through this um, Sludge Belcher because... Uh, it's just so many minions on the field that would be buffed, but uh, this is actually pretty tough for Tom. He either shield slams and does nothing else, or he plays Ysera here. Um, obviously, he can go for maybe a shield slam and throw away his Belcher onto the Doctor Boom, but that doesn't feel too good. If you, I mean, considering if he wanted to play the uh, the Gromish here, but overall, I mean, I think it's basically either shield slam or Ysera. And uh, how greedy do you think he'll be here? Oof, I, I think, he, I mean, he isn't dead to board if there's a combo, is it if he trades into one of the boom bots, right? Yeah, so, oh, it takes a, oh, it dies! Four! So, is would that be Ouch. lethal with combo? So, Jaysha would hit with a face. 12, 16, uh, 19. <laughs> yeah, so. It wouldn't be lethal, thankfully, for Tom, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's pretty unfortunate, but I still think you go the, for the Ysera here. I think you stick to your guns and play it out. Oh, no, he's just going to get a bit worried and clear with the Dr. Boom. I guess he realizes that if he doesn't use his armor there, you know, obviously the Ysera can get cleared out by a combo, and then you don't have any armor to clear out the Dr. Boom from then on, and you're taking 7 damage a turn, so maybe he was worried about that. I mean, he must have been, but it's also just board pressure here uh, and, and presence here, I guess, in that case. But he deals with Dr. Boom, you can play this here next turn. It just depends on how much can JC up on the board. I feel like this is definitely his turn to shine. Does he charge something like the through the floor or go for the low step? He goes for the low yeah. step. I do like this play. Assist. Because, mm -hmm. say, I mean, even if Tom has a, a, a death spite here to take out this, uh, this shade. It doesn't really matter to Jayshot because he got the 4 damage in here and he has the Lothab to keep applying pressure. And uh, even with this Grom, he has the big game hunter. So, yeah, I really like that play, uh, exposing that shade and kind of forcing this Grom out right now. Well, this is the important part of the game, though. Generally, if you if you do it, do you actually just big game hunter and charge the Druid the Claw and leave yourself totally vulnerable to Brawl? Like, you have these positions where you just have a few cards and, and do you really... Can you afford to go all in? Yeah, and I, sometimes the position is the answer is yes, sometimes it isn't, but Brawl just punishes you so heavily. If you had a Brawl right now, and I think Jay says taking the right approach, having yeah. three minions, not overextending. Yeah, I really like his play. Three minions is the perfect amount because if you have two and one gets uh, you know, removed, then you're in a bit of trouble. You don't have enough damage possibly to finish out the game. Wow, Tom gonna get very aggressive. Is this lethal with the Jewel of the Claw charge plus Savage Roar? It's going to be 10 damage from just the Savage Roar alone. So, oh, that's definitely lethal with the, the Force of Nature. And that's going to be game. J-Shot takes game number one in uh, what has become a closer matchup, but still favored for the Druid, so not too much of a surprise. Tom, unfortunately, you know, couldn't summon up the courage to play out the Ysera at a better moment. And that's going to be game one over to J-Shot. Yeah, J-Shot was very impressive here. Tom... Had a slightly awkward hand. He did catch the firework when he needed it, but yeah, no brawl and, and the shield slam was a bit awkward. Uh, Jason got the upper hand and didn't overextend into him. And I think yeah, Jason just deserves a lot of respect for, for his play here. He is up 1 0 and may possibly be going to the final as the last Chinese player in the tournament. Yeah, definitely. What a story that would be. You know, six out of eight players coming out of groups were the invited players, and Jay Shaw and Braros being the only ones who were the Chinese qualifiers getting out, now doing his country proud, being able to make it this far, and giving Tom a run for his money, potentially. Tom has the Reno Warlock, but see a big fat X on that Reno. Looks like he wants to get some tempo at first. 
And uh, looks like he's going to be keeping that Moral Coil and that Hellfire potentially. On the side of Jaysha, he realized that, that this is the Reno Warlock, so that Divine Paper could <coughs> be pretty huge. Going to just keep that in his hand so that he doesn't run out of options. Tom, crucially, gets that Flame Imp, so you know, getting rid of that Reno looks, pretty, looks like a pretty good uh, decision here by Tom right now. Yeah, but I mean, with this the mini bot, this is going to get punished quite heavily. I wonder how this is going to unfold after that. I mean, I think Tom has to win this game if he's going to be contending this entire series here. <clears throat> Shield the mini bot, yeah, it's strong. I don't know about keeping uh, keeping the mind favor against this. I definitely like Jaysha keeping the two drops. He just wants a solid curve and doesn't want to run into uh, any major. I guess run into any any position where he could have just a ton of secrets in hand. He wants to play it safe instead. But hmm, annoyed from Team Strong here. Yeah, yeah annoyed. I don't think you go for the secrets. Yeah, yeah as, annoyed. Tron, as always is pretty annoying to deal with for basically any class. And uh, Jay Shaw very very happy obviously to see the tap out of Tom on turn two and even turn three. All right, gonna get rid of that mortal call. Tom realizes that there are divine favors in there, but overall, Jay Shaw gonna be pretty happy seeing his opponent tap. Not only because he's not developing the board, but on top of that, you know he gets a better divine favor. And uh, looks like Jay Shaw is looking at that cock hammer to make his board more resilient, realizing that that was a pretty you know suspicious mortal coil by Tom. Most likely has Hellfire in hand here. Even the Demon Wrath could do some work. It could, yeah. Tom kind of has everything he needs in terms of removal. Uh, also the Taunt and the Sylvana, so... Yeah, there this, this isn't that much pressure here coming out from Jaysha. Only 4 damage per turn. It's not looking like it's going to ramp up a lot. There's no knife juggler, really. and, and I mean, Tom can clear next turn, most likely, you know. If he goes for the Mercy, this looks almost like it's going to be lights out for Jaysha. Yeah, so does Jaysha commit to the Divine Paper here? Ironically, I think he would like to have seen a secret here, just so he could draw even maybe one more card. But uh, now he has a pretty tough decision. Will he go for the Muster? He could go for the Cog Hammer as well. Basically, the only thing in his hand that he would seem pretty strange would be that Consecration. So yeah, going to go for that Cog Hammer. Not com going to commit any more to the board. Just going to make it as resilient as possible. Gets the Divine Shield back in the left leftmost Noitron, and we will see what comes out of this Shredder. It's going to be a fairy dragon, so can take that out, but does he? I think he probably does. Even though you're losing damage on your board, you know Tom can use that fairy dragon pretty well uh, with that Hellfire or Demon Wrath. I mean, would it matter though? I think in this case, I don't know. I mean, even Tom could even you know proc the Avenge potentially and go for uh, Hellfire afterward with. You know, attacking the Noitron, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Jay Shaw picks up a Quartermaster, so that could be useful in the future, but we know that if he ever commits to that Muscle for Battle, Tom likely just Hellfires. You could even just Demon Wrath on right. on, on that. You know, like, attack into the, the mini bot and Demon Wrath, and, and what does Tom do then? I think Muscle Battle is the correct call and go for that with the Divine Favor. I mean, he can't really be consecrating that, just seems like. There's no merit to that, and the Quartermaster on its own doesn't feel like it fits into any line of play here. But he only has five mana currently. Does he go for the Master? I don't know. Yeah, um, in one sense, the Master for Battle isn't too bad, because we see in Tom's hand he has both the Sylvanas and the Emperor Thoris, and both of those would be really nice plays if um, Jaysha doesn't put enough pressure on the board. So now Jaysha is forcing Tom's hand, and it's likely going to be either tap Hellfire or tap Demon Wrath, and then from there, uh, Jaysha has first play and can potentially go for that Divine Favor afterward. However, Tom Tom doesn't have... I mean, I mean, maybe there's not so much urgency here. Maybe Tom just goes for the Savannahs or the, uh, the Emperor anyway. I mean, it might be tough though, because the, it's the uh, court matter. I wonder if Tom has actually looked up Jaysha as a potential opponent here in the semi-final, and if he knows that there could be a, a court match. I feel like if I knew there would be a, if there would be a court match in the deck, I would go for the Demon Wrath. But it's tough. I mean, yeah. I 
So up until this point, had Tom attacked at all? I think that's the first time he realized that that wasn't uh, Noble Sacrifice. But uh, in any case, Tom, thinking about playing that Sylvanas, obviously the Thorson would help him out immensely for making his uh, his hand a bit cheaper. But maybe he doesn't have the time. Maybe he needs to get the Sylvanas out right now, especially if he's if he runs into a quartermaster. That is true. The quartermaster also seems a bit awkward even here with the uh, because of the Sylvanas is so strong. I feel like if if Tom had gone for the Emperor, he would have been in a lot of trouble. But there's Levanas here, he's gonna get some value no matter what here. Mm. What do you think about just going for the Quartermaster and smacking 12 damage to face? Actually, think... it wouldn't be 12, huh? Because you miss... What would be the maximum? It would be uh, 10 damage to face. I think it's not bad. I mean, I think you have to take risks at some point, and... Is JJ gonna get a better chance than right now? I don't know, I don't think so. I think it's it has to be right now. Yeah. I mean, he has two Consecrates, he has a Divine Favor, this is a completely dead hand. Looks like he's gonna go to con for Consecrate and take it a bit slow. Like he said, he does have the Divine Favor, so that could be something that could be useful um, in the future to get him, to basically refuel him and allow him to continue in this game. But looks like he's gonna go for a bit of a conservative, like kind of a halfway play. Does get a lot of damage into the face of Tom, but uh, this will allow Tom to potentially clear the board next turn. It does here, yeah, and just the demon on its own. We'll proc the redemption, and it is the annoyed to make him now. <laughs> that annoyed Tron. Oh, uh, was that a mistake by Tom? He could have attacked in first. Oh, no. Now, can, now we can steal it, though. You can steal the taunt. You can steal the taunt, which is um, okay. Looks like he's just going to make this, uh, again, kind of annoying for Jaysha. Jaysha is probably going to have to you know, face take the six damage here. I mean, that may matter at some point. Jason going down to 11, that would be a bit rough. But on top of that, he gives the uh, he gives Tom the 1-1, one, one, then has to drop a hero power and a, a quartermaster or, or shredder, potentially consecrate, I don't even know. But I feel like Divine Favor has to come down sooner or later. But the thing is, Tom's hand isn't even that big. Yeah, exactly. Tom, recently, or in these past few turns, has just been playing out cards instead of tapping. I mean, that's kind of how Reno works, right? It's not quite like Handlock. Sometimes you have those smaller, you know, cards or spells or minions to play out into the field like like we've seen. Uh, the Demon Oath, pretty cheap, actually. And uh, Jaysha is going to be tanking that 6 damage. And it looks like it's probably going to be Shredder into Divine Favor. We'll pick him up three cards, so better than an Arcan Intellect at the very least. It is, yeah, marginally, I guess, so we can't complain too much. But the situation, though, what if it, what if he just pulls this around with his Mysterious Challenger? I mean, there is no Shadow Flame, and, and, but I guess this would be the turn that the Tom has to really put on the question. Now is his chance. Do you go for the Low Step, or do you go for the Emperor here? Hmm, that is pretty tough. I mean, at this point, it's... Seems kind of pointless to go for the Emperor just because you know he's drawn. I mean, he'll he will have drawn four cards since the last turn, and there was a situation. I mean, there's been situations where you know he might have dropped in dropped the uh, mysterious challenger, but uh, I guess I guess this ends up working because um, the mysterious challenger only blocks a bit of damage, and with that hellfire at hand, he can potentially have lethal. So I guess Tom knows best here uh, because. Yeah, I mean, how do you stop Tom from getting lethal right now? I think he don't. Yeah. Hmm. That's very interesting. So a very heads-up player there by Tom. He might have secured lethal right now. That is true. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, interesting. Would it maybe have been better to just taunt up the 2-3 as well, I wonder? Hmm. Yeah, interesting that he didn't decide to taunt any of that. I wonder what the reasoning for that was. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? He didn't want to be able. To, he didn't want his Lothab to die because if the Lothab is killed, then he potentially can't get enough damage via his other minions because of the no noble sacrifice. But uh, that's going to be it. Tom with a really solid play at the end there, basically forcing a situation where he had lethal in two turns. 
So very, very good job by him. Yeah, I want to mention yeah, Jason now losing with, I would say, a stronger deck against the deck, decks that Tom has. This is serious for him. A lot of things on the line here. I mean, they both won 2.5k here. And going up to potentially $5,000, that's a lot of money for a Hearthstone Pro. Yeah, definitely. Especially in the Asian scene. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like like we mentioned before, uh, the prize pool for this is, you know, significant. $10,000, that's US dollars, to the winner. $5,000 to the runner-up. And uh, all the semifinalists that you see here have already won $2,500. Those who lost in the round of eight received 1250 And uh, in any case, in this series, tied one game to one, we do have the Secret Paladin remaining for Jaysha, obviously, as well as the Control Warrior, which we're going to be seeing right now. And Tom has decided to bring out his Control Priest. Now, generally, Priest used to be the count to Control Warrior before, when you were running Thought Steals, when you were running... Uh... Ragnar Ross and you're really going greedy with the, I guess, the, uh, the pre, uh, I guess we could call it, yeah, the pre-Dragon Priest. Right. When Priest is considered a weak class. Uh, but now it's completely different. It's kind of the same as the uh, Druid Matter, which just got so much better for the Warrior. Now, mainly the double brawl in a lot of the Warriors is, is important, but you just go to fatigue with Justicar. Justicar is the main main thing. It's less value in the uh, in the priest, and then just so much more uh, staying power in the warrior, because you have so many things like, for example, powered shield that don't really do much. You have six or four one drops, whereas there's no real one drop minions in in the uh, warrior's hand, and the threats that were there are just kind of not there anymore. You mean you just execute the Isera, and, and that's pretty much it most of the time. In the big game hunter, if this is going to be a Doctor Boom, and I feel like this is definitely a DSS game to lose here. Yeah, definitely. It helps so much having that just a card to be able to play and start taking up every single turn. Tom, on the other hand, I don't believe he's playing Ysera. It's kind of hard to remember because we've seen so many priests, and you see, you can see Ysera in both Dragon and Control Priest. But I do believe he's playing one copy of Mind Control, and that was one of the cards that allowed Control Priest back in the day to be favored over Control Warrior, basically being able to eliminate one of the Control Warrior's threats and make it your own. So it's like double removal, right? You're putting your own threat on the board while removing your opponent's. And uh, that could be the saving grace for Tom, but obviously it's going to take a lot of skill, a lot of patience to be able to win the game for either player here uh, as it goes. It's probably going to go very long. No, neither player really has the resources to kill the other. Uh, the Control Warrior kind of does with, you know, the combination of Alex Shaza and Gromish, but... The more safe approach in this matchup is to just go to fatigue because of the inevitability of just a car. Yeah, the thing is, the Brawl will probably get at least a 3 for 1. And we have cards like the uh, Power Shield, for example, that are probably not going to kill uh, another card or, or deny another card. Same with the you know, North Shire Cleric. You can draw with the North Shire Cleric, fine. And then that's a 1 for 1 in most matches. But when you go to Fatigue, you know, if you draw two cards and, and you don't kill anything with the North Shire, that's a lost card. And something like the... Uh, like the bad, like the execute, they they're getting at least one kill each. Uh, so I feel like in this case the priest needs to be the aggressor, and uh, the uh, the warrior has to be the defender. And for warrior, it's not that hard to defend actually, because there's so much armor and there's so many weapons. That's why, for example, often gets a two for one here. Yeah, that's exactly the case, and it's so hard for priest to be the aggressor. Um, I've seen these matches come very close to going in Priest's favor, but typically it's just so hard, like you say, with those, uh, with the double brawl. Uh, did you get a chance to look at Jayshaw's deck and kind of confirm uh, if it was double brawl or not? I did not. I mean, to me at least, the Sarad indicates that there's only one, mm -hmm. uh, only one brawl. It's more likely, I would say. Is generally, you have Death Lords in the double brawl version. Uh, I guess, yeah, <laughs> even, a, even a Gorhal. So it comes down to a lot, a lot of things here, but what can happen often is that you need to save a Shrink Master Cabal combo uh, for the, uh, I guess, eventual 
return of the Sarah from the uh, warrior, and, and that's one of the big things the priests can do is yeah, stealing the Sarah or potentially having their own Sarah get a lot of value. But if the warrior is able to deal with his Sarah, which generally is the case with execute and silver slam, the warrior just zooms ahead. But this this here is not looking that good for his Jace actually. He doesn't have a good answer for the. Uh, uh, for the ancient blade master and going to turn five may have to probably throw away a rod that would look really weak. Yeah, doesn't have really an answer for anything here. Uh, what do you think about his, his decision last turn to not go for fiery warx and cruel taskmaster on the dark cultist? I feel like, I mean, almost no matter how big this Northshire cleric gets, especially as far as the health is concerned, it doesn't really matter too much. Not too worried about the priest drawing cards, are you? I mean, it's not it's not good, really. You that gives them more options and, and more possibilities to counter you, and then put on aggression. So it's never a good thing. But it's not as devastating as it would be if you were facing priests, for example, with a suit deck or or a hunter deck. Right. So uh, yeah, it looks like. I mean, Tom is, has an interesting decision here. Obviously, he has to take out this Nexus Champion Sword right away. J-Shot playing a really interesting kind of style, being uh, super patient and not committing anything to the board until he realizes he had to in this Nexus Champion Sword. Tom has a few options here. He could go super aggressive by playing a Vulgin. Uh, he could also go for a Holy Nova, and maybe attack in with his um, Northshire Cleric first, get uh, two cards that way. But it uh, could be too much of a commitment. Looks like he's going to go with that super aggressive play and go with the Vulgin, realizing that this game cannot go long or he's not likely to win it. It's the aggressive approach by Tom, and I don't blame him for that. Now, the revenge, he it, just has too much health for that to work out. He um, can take out the Vulgin. So that's something, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But what about just going for Shield Maiden and playing it? slow. Do you really need to be in a panic mode where you're killing Vulcan mm -hmm. and giving them so many options to draw? I mean, something like a Holy Nova against that would just be so strong. But last turn, I would be looking at something like potentially Power Shield Heal, playing to Nexus Champion Serrat. Uh, you would have, well, would it be two mana to follow that up? I think that wouldn't have been too bad, but it's that's kind of the value play where this is definitely the aggressive play. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like Jaysha is going to go with the Shield Maiden there. And Tom picks up the Circle of Healing. Could be somewhat useful in uh, keeping his minions basically topped off. But doesn't have a great way to deal with this at the moment. Other than, you know, throwing away his biggest minion or a combination of his smaller minions. Does have the Power Word Shield to kind of get one of his minions out of the way uh, of dying here. But, yeah, um, I think no matter what, Power Shield is going to come down now. It just depends on how he's going to be dealing with this. Something possible is Power Shield on Dark Cultist, Holy Nova. Uh, Power Shield, yeah, on, on possibly on on, uh, <laughs> on Balance with a Circle. I wow. think if he go, he's going for that, he should add on the uh, Inter Blade Master, but it still leaves him a bit vulnerable to... Uh, to uh, Brawl. But... Wow. Yeah, I was wondering if Tom was going to go for this. He is committing completely to Brawl, has no fear, has a huge board here, and yeah, Tom's saying this is the only way I'm going to win. Time to go all in. Maybe calling it a bit early though, because Tom is actually getting a lot of value through these inefficient trades. He's gotten two minions now in a row for free, and there's no Brawl, but generally you would have a Brawl. Uh, in the mid game as the warrior, and that would be your closure. But without the brawl, without the execute, without the sim slam, this is still looking really rough for Jasia. He may be falling here. Yeah, I'm loving this play by Tom, honestly, because, I mean, typically you think of Control Priest, you don't think of putting on this much aggression, but he realizes he cannot win the late game with Jessicar being an inevitability. So just gonna go as aggressive as possible, and Jasia, like he said, under so much trouble here, under so much pressure. He really is. Yeah, this is a frustrating position as the as the warrior because you're just thinking, what if I have the brawl? You know, when am I going to be drawing the brawl? Can I go for something like Doctor Boom now? And I mean, is that even a possibility now? 
Right, and uh, if Tom, I mean, if Jay Shaw is unable to ever draw the brawl, even something like mind control could be a huge weapon, and even being a tempo card, because uh, if Jay Shaw tries to play something to kind of contest, Tom could just take it right away. See the Sylvanas coming in hand, and that could be a major point too. Immediately plays it and just goes for the face. Doesn't even want to worry about the Doctor Boom right now. Jay Shaw is at ten health against the Control Priest. Brawl of Bash, this seems to be right here. Yeah. Oof. Oof. And no, no dice. He gets the owl, which is a fantastic way to deal with the Vulgin, but I mean... Either the Vulgin or the Savannah does have the revenge for three damage, though, and that's pretty big. It really is, yeah. I mean, wonder if Tom, Tom's probably not playing around that, but the minions have five to seven damage here, or well, four to seven damage here. Yeah, definitely. I think... I think you just go for it, right? You uh, you play the Owl, you play the Revenge. I think you play the Owl and the Sylvanas here, just because you don't want your, to get your um, Dr. Boom stolen away. Um, or actually, he could throw the, the uh, Dr. Boom into the Sylvanas right away, maybe. But let's say he's just going to go with the Revenge first. And uh, he can actually trade his... Oh, this is kind of interesting. He's going to actually silence those Sylvanas. But uh, he's running out of time and he needs to not die. He gets the Armor Smith. And. That's just game on. No, it's not game on boards. But uh, the Holy Nova is there for Tom. And I believe that it just goes through and kills him, right? Yeah, and that's going to be lethal for Tom. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he lost at least he lost one armor at least. Uh, he could have you know, dropped the armor smith before attacking. There was also the option of going for the armor smith before avenging. He could have attacked into the uh, into the vel into the uh, Vulcan with the fiery war axe and then traded into Sylvanas with Doctor Boom, taking <laughs> both of them. So yeah, Jason just you know crumbled under the pressure there, and Tom takes a two-one lead. Only needs to win, I believe, with his uh, his warrior now and. Could we be seeing Control Warrior Mirror? We, we, it looks like we're going to be seeing exactly that. Golden Magni versus Golden Magni. I still can't get over the fact that a Control Priest beat a Control Warrior on what was that, turn 8? <laughs> what was that? It's called it. It did, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how a Priest beats Control Warrior at this stage of the game. Uh, but yeah, Tom just got a lot of value through very simple things like like his hero power and, and power with shield. I mean, generally that's not supposed to catch you value because you're supposed to be even as there are weapons and there, there's the shield slam and there's the brawl to keep you even. But if everything just falls apart, but yeah, this is going to be a long, long game and I don't know, almost after... guaranteed to go into <laughs> lethal here. Yeah, after like, Tom's aggression last game, maybe he just smorks him down. You never know. <laughs> That is true, yeah, but I mean, his hand is really bad, actually, and often drawing with the Acolyte is not a bonus. Mm. Having the Brawl early, though, definitely is, because you don't want to be drawing that late and, and be forced to use it maybe to kill one or two minions. Yeah, absolutely. Brawl is one of the weaker cards in this matchup, because typically, you know, you have a couple of big minions on the Warrior, and it's you don't really need any more than that. You don't need to put anything on the board for the Brawl in order to win the game out. You're not going to, you know... You're not going to basically smork your, your opponent down like I was kind of joking about a second ago. But one of the interesting things about this matchup, as we see Tom decide to not go for the Acolyte, realizing that, you know, this could go fatigue. I mean, we even saw in those, in the highlight videos, in the breaks, you know, kind of everyone, I know everyone in the chat loves those videos. Um, but uh, we saw a lot of the Control Warrior versus Control Warrior videos come down to, uh, Sylvanas comes down and your opponent plays an Acolyte, kills the Savannas, and forces them to steal the Acolyte. And at that point, you force the Acolyte to draw a bunch of cards and you win the game. So, uh, funnily enough, sometimes you want to save your Sylvanas for a really nice situation where you can steal something big, but oftentimes it's nice to just get it out early so that situation can never happen. That is true here, and that's by controlling the mid-game. Tom, is he going to just drop the belt? I think he has to, probably, but it's not pretty mm. at all. And, yeah, I mean, both people are going to have just the car, both are going to be at, like, 30 armor or something when the fatigue happens. 
unless one of them just doesn't draw a brawl and the other one gets a very aggressive start. But I mean, having four minions on the board is a mistake against Warrior if you're playing Warrior. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about Tom just playing out the Acolyte here and hoping that it baits Jason into killing it? Or is that too optimistic? It just, I mean, that would kind of assume that Jaysha doesn't understand the matchup too well, I suppose. I think, I think yeah, it's too optimistic. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to be just hero powering here, so you're correct. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I think hero power is, like, kind of similarly optimistic as well, because Jaysha's never going to swing uh, with that unless you put something down that he wants to swing into, and uh, this is exactly it. You, He's going to almost certainly trade into the Sludge Belter right here. And it, as the control warrior, it feels pretty good to be able to kill a Sludge Belter off with the uh, Death Spite, or kill basically anything with 5 health with your second charge. Yeah, I mean, the thing is though, if you if he has the, uh, has the Death Spite out, and you let him swing, the second swing, without establishing a board, it just doesn't work out that well for you, because basically, gives Jaysha the option of equipping a second weapon now and, and then rolling through here. But Tom's hand is just really, really poor. Belcher is not a mini in the strong against Warrior, but I feel like they're both playing Control Warrior, neither of them is playing Fatigue Warrior, so it's just going to come down to which player has the greedier deck, and I think that may be Jaysha here with this rod. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case, looking at uh, what Tom has in his hand in, in particular. Uh, do you does J Shot do you think run two Sludge Belters? I mean, Sludge Belter obviously it's a nice option against aggressive decks, but if you're playing against control, uh, obviously it dies pretty hard to you know just a five five. Looks like Tom realizing he doesn't have enough cards in hand to be able to compete in this mid game, going to actually draw with his acolyte. He is yeah, it's better than just falling short and and because there could be a big threat that he can't deal with and if. There's a big threat he can't deal with. That might get a 2 or 3 for 1 tree. Value through uh, basically having options. Just like what happened with Tom last game when he got a lot of value through being ahead on board by having a lot of options. Even though it would be worse than fatigue, he got value through aggression. Yeah, it definitely could be the case. Sometimes you can get some extra damage in by, you know, getting a mid-range size board that your opponent doesn't want to use their premium removal on and you can start smacking the face in that situation. But uh, definitely a difficult matchup to navigate. And uh, this is one example right here. Does Jaysha attack his slime into this Acolyte of Pain? I mean, he has plenty of cards, so maybe he realizes if he can speed up Tom's acceleration into Fatigue, then uh, you know he'll be even on cards as, as far as them being as the cards in hand. And then, you know, he can compete with the whatever Tom puts on the board as Tom picks up a second Brawl, which is a horrible card to pick up here. But, uh, I mean, he, they're even in hand size, but if maybe j Shock can speed up Tom's, you know, descent into Fatigue, that might be a good idea, since he can kind of keep up right now. But your Mind Division is a fantastic spell for j Shock because he could get a big minion, Ooh. which is better than, than is often the case, because he get uh, Tom just can't allow oh, Jason no. to keep this rod alive and get value through him because wow. yeah, value through being ahead. But uh, I mean, oh. the thing is, mind division. Yeah, you could get you could get you a belt, you could get you a Sarah, you could get you a brawl or execute. Whereas if you have something like lightning bolt, it's not going to get that much value. Or having something that would even hurt you, like an arcane intellect, which would hurt in this matchup, not help. Yeah, exactly. So that's Nexus Champion's rod. Tom's not even going to take it out. That is absolutely crazy. It's going to leave it on the board. Jay Shaw, now he can armor up and even play out this Despite and, you know, make sure he doesn't overdraw Counterspell. Oh my goodness. So Jay Shaw has this, the, you know, the world is his oyster right now. It can do no wrong. Let's see what this Mind Vision picks up. Uh, what does he get here? Gets an execute, which is not bad. Allows him to be a little bit more cavalier with that removal, and uh, you know, not really worry about too much about it. A lot of times we see a situation where it goes to the end game, and people are too careful with their executes, and uh, they're unable to you basically utilize them properly in the end because there's no activators. But I feel like Jay Shaw can kind of just throw out these executes as he as he wants because eventually uh, it will. I mean, eventually he'll draw enough removal for his opponent's board. Yeah, I felt like Paul Tom was definitely playing into this being a mirror entity. He plays the Acolyte first, 
to be a horrible thing for Rotation to have happened, but now, I mean, Tom has just drawn more cards, he's used more cards, he's gotten less value out of them, the Serrat is going to get his third spell. I, mean, I felt like... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I felt like executing might have been uh, an option, attacking with the weapon and executing the Serrat. Before, yeah. when he brawled and failed to brawl. Yeah, I thought I thought the same exact thing, but I was going to say, this feels like one of those crazy Trump videos where he says, too much value! There's so much value in, in Jay Shaw's hand, and he can even draw even more by just using his hero power. Looks like he's going to silence the Acolyte, strangely enough, just to um, cut off so Tom's supply of cards. But yeah, just even gets lock and load. Caldi, too much value! Oh my god! Oh my god. But he can't play it right now. It's just, it's just out of control, this game. I mean, he has to worry about fatigue at this <laughs> point in the calls. game. Like, yeah. Just gonna throw away the revenge, just casually gonna throw away revenge and use the execute here. This is ridiculous. Oof. Oh my goodness. Alright, so finally this Nexus Sarad is going to die to the uh, Fiery War Axe of Tom. I wonder if he plays his Ysera here, just hope that his opponent doesn't have the second execute, or the third execute. And he's gonna go for it. He is, yeah, not afraid of anything here. I mean, Tom figured, okay, if I'm gonna win this, I gotta get value right now, and that's gonna be through Ysera, but uh, this is the sad, sad state of, of uh, Ysera right now. It just, it just gets executed right away. <laughs> do you go for lock and load into execute? I think you do, yeah. <laughs> This game is absolutely ridiculous. I love Nexus Champion to run. Yeah, you gotta you gotta love him. But if you're going for lock and load though, you have to go for something to activate the execute. And is that going to be Death Spite? And you're using seven mana? Yeah. Potentially hero power with that. Maybe he... he needs to wait one more turn. But I think <laughs> I wouldn't use loop block here. I don't know. Mm. He does have plenty of options to gain armor as you see him pick up that uh, Shield Maiden. So it looks like he's going to not go for the lock and load. Would have loved to see that right now. Get some Hunter cards in your hand. But, you know, could be a, could be a thing as uh, too much value since, you know, his hand is getting pretty full there. Tom, how many Mage Seekers has he checked for so far? He's checked for Mirror Entity. He's, uh, he's checked for Duplicate and Effigy, I believe. He has not checked for... He checked for Vaporize and he checked for Ice Barrier, so he has not checked for Ice Block or Counterspell. Or uh, Spellbender, Spellbender yeah, yeah. yeah. So those three possibilities there. Yeah, I actually had my... Uh, I had my uh, Expression of King stolen for some time. Uh, I think it was a few weeks ago, yeah. It's, it feels so horrible, but I don't know what, what the ice wants to go for. I think he can do no wrong, honestly, at this point. He goes for... He yeah, goes with just the current, just start armoring up. I mean, endless armor, endless value, and yeah, oof, even I think he, yeah, Tom is, is going to fatigue sooner. Yeah, he's drawn a lot of cards. I was a bit surprised that Jaysha cut off the card draw of Tom earlier when he did that with the Acolyte. I guess realizing that as long as he maintains a decent amount of value, he is going to be ahead in the. Um, the fatigue race, and maybe you give you know Tom the ability to get the Justicar first, but uh, that's kind of he neither here nor there. Tom, I mean Justicar, excuse me, Jay Shaw going to be able to have so much value out of that tank up from here on out. Looks like he's gonna play his own Yastera, and this is gonna require Tom to use a spell before he goes for either an Execute or a Shield Slam. Yeah, that is true here, but is he gonna get counter spells? So he may actually. I think, yeah, using the sleep block first is very well played. I gotta give it to Tom. I mean, he realized that this is probably gonna be Spellbender. Or. What, uh, what do you think is more valuable, the Brawl or the Spell, or the, uh, the Shield block there? I guess the Shield block's not too valuable because you're pretty far into your deck. Yeah, you don't even want the Shield block, I think. Because the draw is, is kind of useless and the armor is negligible because you'll get the Death Decker eventually. So, but the Brawl is, is going to be a two for one or, or a one for. You're going to get two or three minions at least, you know, at some point in the game, even if it's just boom, Dr. Boom and his Boom bots. Alright, so it looks like it's going to be the Dr. Boom coming out. It's pretty annoying for Iwari to deal with this. Obviously, Tom can go for the Brawl and just hope you get the two out of three. And uh, he immediately reaches for that. But uh, after this turn, what do you think about just playing the Sylvanas out as we, the Dr. Boom does lose? 
no disasters happening here like we saw earlier with the uh, Nexus Champions Star. But yeah, what do you think about playing the uh, Sylvanas here and just, you know, preventing... Although I guess Tom has played already two Acolyte of Pain, so there's, there isn't that disaster potential anymore. I think, yeah, Brawl was a bit too... I mean, he needed to get value through something. I think brawling that early, he needed to get a huge brawl because he don't know if there's going to be a second brawl. So there was the potential for Jason to overextend, although he's been pretty passive when he came to the Druid game. Seems like Jason knows exactly how to play against Control Warrior. Yeah, definitely. I think is Did I read that right? Is it 12 versus 12? Cards, I mean? I'm sorry? The amount of cards left, I think I saw it was, I mean, Tom just hovered over both of them. I think it was 12 from Jay Shaw, and I think I saw 12 from Tom as well, which would be kind of surprising. It felt like Tom has drawn way more cards, but maybe that's not the case. The deck looks thinner for Tom. Maybe it's the card back or the, the ankle that we're getting, but it looks slightly thinner for Tom. I don't know, because there's so many cards that JC has gotten that have been through Sarat or, yeah, yeah Mind <clears throat> Vision. Yeah, definitely. We'll throw out into Mind Vision, right? And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that fatigue in the future. But for now, Tom or Jay Shaw continuing to have that huge card advantage lead, at least as far as the the hand size. Uh, however, two of those cards are Acolyte of Pain, which I doubt he's going to want to play anytime soon, if at all, for the rest of the game. So you can kind of look at Jay Shaw's hand at having six cards at the moment, which is pretty comparable to Tom's five. Uh, as far as the board state right now, it looks like Tom's going to have to just throw away his Laughing Sister here and um, go from there. I think so, but I mean, if the, there's the option to, to uh, steal the Sylvanas by killing your own Sylvanas, but it's going to be very expensive. I think just killing the Sylvanas right here uh, with the weapon and then the minion is the correct call, maybe throwing down the Shield Maiden, but then... Where does it go from there? How does he get ahead? He isn't taking any big risks and maybe... I don't know. Oh. Yeah, it just feels pretty hopeless at this point. So yeah, he did actually have the opportunity to steal the opponent's Sylvanas, but I guess it doesn't really matter too much since Jay Shaw obviously has uh, the Despite in hand, so it would just clear actually Tom's board. But um, yeah, for the time being, Jay Shaw... I wonder what he goes for here. The the crazy thing is that he's already seen two brawls, so he can actually commit to the board, strangely enough. You typically don't see that in this matchup. But now Jay Shaw putting on the pressure, realizing that, you know, I'm not under any uh, danger at all. Might as well play my Alex Straza. I mean, from I did skip one tank up, but I put some pressure on, and there's really nothing to uh, punish this from Tom right now. Even if he has a big game, big game hunter, it doesn't really matter too much. Tom yeah, that is true. I mean, yeah, like, what can he do? He could possibly hit the Reunion Towns for a double steal here. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, 15 health, Tom doesn't have the health to play for value anymore. And, and how is he going to be bursting down Jason? That just seems impossible when he's at, what, close to 50 health here. <sighs> yeah, this is just painful. It's, it's just, we're watching Tom slowly, you know, be drained away here by Jasha. Yeah, Tom can deal with this board, but it's extremely expensive as far as the resources he'd have to use. I think he's trying to think of ways to maybe use just two spells in order to clear this. It looks like he's going to actually use his face, and they're going to be Sylvanas, and wow, he has to commit both the Bash and the Shield Slam in order to steal out this, uh, this Alexstrasza. It feels really bad. It's a really all-in play. And just going to be completely negated by this big game hunter. Or just lethal. Is, it's, it's that's just lethal, like... actually. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's going to be lethal for Jace Jaw. Has the Gromish in hand and can just win the game. Feels really bad for Tom. But we are going to go to a game five. Jace Jaw, able I think to think that. That, uh, Sorry. I think a thing to mention here is that this is very draining. I mean, Tom looks just tired after that game. And... Being behind for that long can't feel good. I don't know if, if Tom can actually pick himself up to win this game five. I mean, if he if he's actually traveled to China, maybe he is able to put himself in a state where he can play well in game five. But it's going to be secret pals and against control warrior here, and anything can happen in that matchup. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is kind of an interesting matchup because it involves. It requires the Secret Paladin to get a really fast start that the uh, Control Warrior can't come back from. Um, in particular, 
you know, if the control warrior isn't able to draw the brawl, or if you just have two big minions on the board, you know, using a, something like Avenge or Blessing of Kings, then it's not really too brawlable for the warrior. So it's going to require Tom to have a lot of removal options. But we do see in hand that he has the Fire War X and the Bash, and those are absolutely huge. They, they really, really are. Um, there's no shield the mini bot, which is a key card here for Jaysha. Keeping the master without having a two drop or a one drop, I think I have to disagree with you. What do you think about that? I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Uh, keeping keeping the master here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeping the master would be kind of interesting, especially you know going first. But um, I guess it is pretty weak against the control warrior. What do you think about Tom throwing away bash actually? Oof, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, it's it's not the strongest. You, well, what what are you gonna kill? You know, maybe a sweater, but you can't kill Lothep. It Doesn't really work against the mini bot that well. It's a three drop. You'd rather want the acolyte. For the armor smith is massive. And the thing is, how is Jaysha gonna put on pressure here? Is he gonna be waiting until turn eight? The sweater is is definitely nice, but no t no one drop, no two drop, no three drop. Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, I think that was the kind of the reason why he was considering keeping the Muscle for a battle, but like you say, it's going to be pretty difficult to get anything going here, having to use his hero power second. And uh, Tom, super patient, doesn't even use the coin to uh, get out his Armorsmith last turn. Going to be saving that up, and uh, now he's going to be able to possibly play on curve for the rest of the game. That looks like, look, look, look like it here, yeah, I mean... But Noble Sacrifice might even, might even be a bad thing for Jason to use. I don't really know. There's no brawl, thankfully, for Jaysha in Tom's hand. But from here on out, I mean, you need you need the pressure and that's bad on top of everything else. You can yeah, deal that's... with Avenge. You can deal with you can deal with uh, Redemption. You know, so attacking here, there's no risk to it really. The Avenge comes down and he can just. Use the fire walk, even go for the death. I think fire walk is probably stronger because it will give you options for a, a earlier Baron again, possibly, um, which could be relevant. Yeah, definitely. I mean, going for the Fire War X here will allow him to kind of curve a bit better, but looks like he's going to go for the Death Spite. I mean, there's merit to that as well because of the fact that he has the Acolyte of Pain in hand and. Uh, I mean, looking so bad for Jaysha right now. He can play out this Shredder, but what does that really do? Even the Blessing of Kings just dies to the board. So. Yeah, there is the Divine Favor, but Tom knows that he has to play very aggressive here against uh, this type of Paladin, because you just sit back without a Brawl, you just end up losing. There Ooh. is the Brawl. It's so important for Tom to have that back up here. Yeah, definitely. It's so important to have that in his back pocket to be able to get that. I mean, we saw earlier with Life Coach, just having that quality consecration in hand, I mean, allowed him to play so differently. Even if you, I mean, even if you don't end up using it, you have that in your back pocket and you're able to play so greedily and make such different plays because you have that reset button potentially. And we saw that with Live Coach, he was able to play really greedily, knowing that he could uh, clear his opponent's board whenever he wanted, and that made him, you know, allowed him to make better plays essentially and not have to worry about falling too, be too far behind on tempo. And this is a luxury that Tom has right now with that brawl, just able to do basically whatever he wants and, uh, even at the moment, Jay Shaw just having trouble keeping up with this board. Yeah, that is true here. I mean, the Undisney Valiant is, is all right, I guess, but there's no Doctor Six. And on top of that, the Divine Pair comes down. Does he even top deck it here? Mm. He does in the last card here. That's very important. So, so important. And that actually puts him back into this game. Yeah, it was looking great for Tom, and now Jay Shaw has the opportunity to bring this back, has that Mysterious Challenger. This is going to be a bit of a roadblock in this uh, in this Sludge Buster, but Jay Shaw definitely has, has a chance now. He does, yeah, but I, mean, I don't like Tom attacking. He gets someone's armor out of it, and the armor is very relevant when the brawl is in hand, because it just gives you more time to wait and get a greedier brawl going. Yeah, I definitely agree. So Jay Shaw, he's likely to play the Mysterious Challenger here, but he could go for something like the Blessing of Kings. He gets a great trade-off. 
uh, with this Anoyatron into that, and uh, he can play, you know, miss, uh, a shield and minibot, or maybe two secrets behind it as well, but um, really hard to pass up this mysterious challenger. It is here, yeah. I mean, I guess, though, this comes down to what he hits with the Avenge, uh, well, well, the second Avenge here, even. Because if it hits the Mysterious Challenger, there is the option for just big Avenger, and that's coming down, then there seems to be no no way for the comeback. But the Bass Execute is always an option on top of that. There is the Fiery War I have to clear, so even though the Mysterious Challenger comes down, I'm still liking Tom's chances here. Yeah, definitely Tom has the answers, and that's kind of why I think maybe going for the unconventional play, it looks like he is going to go for it, going to go for the Blessing of Kings instead of the Mysterious Challenger, and I believe this is just a way to bait out that removal and try to make sure his Mysterious Challenger you know, can stick onto the field. It seems like it is here, uh, but now Execute, there's no 5 drops. For, for Tom, but is he just going to drop the Akala and take it slow here? Maybe it. Very quick play by Tom there. Not uh, not saving his XE for anything bigger. Does have the big game hunter in order to deal with a potential mysterious challenger, or maybe he believes it's not in hand because why would you never? Why would you ever not play mysterious challenger, right? So could be the case. But Jay Shaw looks like he is reaching for that now. No better play this turn. No Blessing of Kings or anything like that. So, gonna come into the field. Only draws two secrets. What will Jay Shaw play along with this Mysterious Challenger? Is he gonna go for the Secret Keeper, the Noble Sacrifice, or the Repentance? All three have merit. I'm personally in favor of the Repentance. Because uh, at this point, Dr. Boom might even be an option if you're in the right position here. But yeah, with with uh, with Bash, there's not an option. There is the option for the big mantra, but I hmm. believe yeah, the uh, does the is there a redemption in there? Wow, this is gonna guarantee that the Avenge goes on to the mysterious challenger. So pretty well played by Tom, and uh, that I guess a bit of a oversight by Jay Shaw because without that noble sacrifice. There's the guarantee that the Avenge goes on to the uh, Mysterious Challenger, so... Yeah, maybe a on bit top of that also, yeah, like, on top of that also, the Repentance is out, so next turn, uh, Tom can go for the uh, Baron Garen pretty easily here, but... Yeah, this, I think this is a challenge where they would be okay to Ooh. possibly uh, go for the... go for the draw last. I think I would have preferred the block maybe that's just me here over hmm. the taskmaster here power in a way it kind of makes sense because the shield block uh, it as far as the armor is concerned he gets a bit more armor this way even though he's giving the shield mini bot extra damage so it's kind of interesting but uh, actually it might end up taking eight damage out of this shield mini bot so maybe not so not so great overall but um yeah, Jaystar realizing he couldn't play Tyrion in that situation, just a bit too weak there. And actually going to put a pretty fearsome board on the table. And um, yeah, Jaystar pretty all in here. Tom's going to have to find a way to deal with this. Does pick up the Jessica Trueheart, so that could be pretty huge in the future. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of how does Tom clear this. Uh, does he save the execute or, or does he just... Off the just the car here and, and armor up. I feel like if he does, he shouldn't attack with the weapon and just be content. I mean, there's no commanding spirit here, so if Tyrion plops down or or, or a second mystery challenge, you could just brawl and then win the game. Yeah, definitely. Definitely makes sense by Tom there. Really heads up play. Realizing that with the tank up, he's only taking three damage, so no big rush for him. And if ever a big board comes in the field, he can have that brawl. Again, just having that reset button in the back of his pocket is just helping him so much. Alright, looks like Tyrion's finally coming down here. And how does Tom deal with this? Do you just play this Ysera? <laughs> that would be actually so ballsy of him to be to do that. He only sees nine damage on the field, so it is a possibility, but you know, if you lose after making such a greedy play like that, you feel horrible. Yeah, this is everything on the line. Game number five. Uh, maybe the shield block. 
Go to Barn Garden, okay, okay. Some merge that, but it's not like a car camera could just mess everything up. Yeah, like, that is very true. Uh, I guess he took that chance and just wanted to have a nice way to ping off the Divine Shield. Didn't want to use Bash or, you know, anything like that. And let's see if he gets rewarded for it. He's still at 22 health. He still has the Bash Shield and Shield Block, and he gets to tank up every single turn. So I'm kind of liking the, the patience here by Tom. Yeah, that's true. He can clear the Tyrion, but then it's just a matter of can he out-heal the weapon or out-armor the weapon. I think he probably does. He also has a, a second wow. uh, second savior here, but, but it, he'll need to kill the Baron Geddon Jace that does now, and he has so many chances, so Brawl has to be coming down now, and, and what can what can Jace do after that if Tyrion doesn't survive? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Tom, even he can brawl and then he can go bash into execute if he really needs to. Is there any sort of nightmare scenario here for Tom? I don't believe there is. Although he does take a ton of damage from those knife jugglers. Yeah, I mean, there was the quartermaster somewhere in Jace's deck, but with all the recruits gone, it's no longer a threat now. Yeah, it's going to be 1-1 one, one left here alive. 5-3 uh, happened, but there should be some secret popping, right? Redemption, oh, redemption gives him another Tyrion, but it okay. doesn't matter though, yeah. Right. And what's the last secret there? I guess it's Noble Sacrifice? Has to be, yeah. Yeah, it has to be Noble Sacrifice. Yeah, that's looking even really kings, bad. Yeah. Like, even, even kings, there's only one divine favor. The Quartermass is one, so that's Ooh. 8 damage, but I mean, he can even just go for Alexstrasza here. But do you go for Alexstrasza or do you use the Bash? I feel like you do go for Alexstrasza. Still, I mean, it, it's threatening a lot of damage. With a that would actually be yeah, it would be lethal now if he if he would go for the. Uh... Well, it would be. Yeah, Blessing Kings would be lethal then. Yeah, Blessing. Well, he does kill one of the after three the, threes after here. After the attack, of course. Yeah, after yes. the attack moment. So well played by Tom here, making sure to kill one of the 3-3s three first. And so now, Jaysha has 10 damage, which means no Blessing of Kings will be able to kill Tom. So overall, well, very well played. And uh, this Mysterious Challenge one of the better draws that he can draw here. Jaysha trying his best to make this as much of a game as possible. Unfortunately, doesn't draw any secrets out of his deck. But yeah, this is, this is kind of as close as it can possibly get, considering Tom uh, actually stabilized here. Yeah, it really is. I feel like he has to kill the Amber Smith, but it'll take him down to eight. And I mean, there isn't a lot of removal here in in Tom's hand. He can kill the three three with Bash and trade into the six six, but he's still taking some damage. But the thing is, the Justicar I think is going to be the hero of this game because this tank up here with four armor each turn is just going to start adding up. You also add the shield block to follow that up. So yeah. Yeah, Jaysoft with a very tough decision whether or not to kill this armor smith does decide to go for it, realizing that you know any Silverhand recruit that he pops up from here on now could be just food for that, um, that armor smith. Gets this shield made, then it's even more armor. He might not use it this turn. Looks like he's going to go for the shield block first. Gets the shield slam, and I think this is all but over, Kaldi. I mean, look at this. I guess the bash, the three three. I mean, he can even go face here. There's no chance of him dying all the way back up to 20 health. I don't think there's anything Jayshaw can draw here. Even if he draws a Dr. Boom, there's just too much health for Tom. Yeah, I feel like this he's stabilized now and, and secured the victory, it seems to be now. Well played to Tom again and again. He barely survived, and this was such a close game. Can't take anything away though from uh, Jason. Like, he played like a champ, and he almost had this entire series. Yeah, Tom. What a close, like close series! Yeah, yeah, what a close series. So close in the end, Tom. Even feeling brave enough to play that Doctor Boom, realizing there's no chance of him dying. I mean, threatening lethal on the board right now, and uh, likely going to see a concede from Jaysha, most likely. So crazy, so, so painful to see Jaysha go out in this manner. He was so close to taking it out and getting to the finals of the Celestial Invitational, but looks like Tom is going to reach the finals of yet another LAN. A lot of emotion must be going on, and 
Tom, the uh, killer of China here, fourth player he's knocking out from the China region. Uh, must be must be uh, nice for him, especially with yeah, the China Taiwanese relationship right now. Yeah, definitely. And uh, gonna be Boombot hitting the face for two. Not really much that Jaysha can do here. Just playing the game out. It's gonna hear a power his very last time in this tournament. Taking out the Alex draws. It looks like okay, maybe there's gonna be one more turn here, but uh yeah, realistically nothing no way for Jay Shock to get back into this game. That is true, yeah. Twenty-three health, Tom isn't dying, so it's gonna go to fatigue probably if he isn't able to just kill him beforehand. But yeah, now up to what is it, thirty twenty nine health, that's the <laughs> attack. I mean, Almost back up to your original health. That's what Warrior can do. Doesn't even need Reno Jackson. Just, you know, straight up tanking up. A few tank ups here and there. A couple of bashes, a couple of shield blocks. And that is finally going to be game, I believe. I don't think there's any way for even J-Shot to prevent lethal on board. So, yeah. So crazy Tom able to take this game. There it is. There is the concede. The winner is Tom. He's going to... Give a victory stretch right there. He's totally relieved, obviously, at the studios there. Made the trip from Taiwan all the way out to China. And congratulations to him. Absolutely on fire lately. Already won two lands. And this is going to be potentially his third. And will we get to see a rematch of the Onog finals where he defeated Kalento? We will find out when Kalento goes against Life Coach in the next semifinal. What do you think about that matchup? It's going to be pretty fantastic. Uh, it's going to take some time, but I think yeah, Colento's just been on fire. He's had the time to really, uh, at this point, you know, get some coffee maybe, relax a little bit, and 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 because uh, he, he looked so tired in the first match. I feel like Life Coach also, like, he may have just woken up to play, but he, they both of them still won with what looked to be some of the weakest deck. I'm particularly interested in to see how Colento does after that. Yeah, definitely going to be a match to watch. So everyone, don't go anywhere. Enjoy the highlights from the break, and we'll see you after this.